there's an elephant in the room with Total War, and it's the fact that the battles in Shogun 2 are way better than in any other Total War game, even the ones that are coming out 9 years later in 2020. They've had 7 tries since Shogun 2, and they've all failed to exceed or even match the 9 year old effort that was Shogun 2 from 2011. If you're given a coin with 7 chances to flip for heads and you can't pull heads even a single time, someone's given you a duff coin. Either the coin's rigged or you just pulled a 1 and 100, 2 to the power of 7. You've got to assume foul play. It's actually worse than that because game design understanding is always improving and the technology is always improving. This should be getting easier and easier with every try and with every passing day. Another elephant in the room is the fact that Follow the Samurai, which was basically a full expansion for Shogun 2 and very arguably the peak of the whole 20 year franchise, was immediately followed by Rome 2, which was unimaginably disappointing and possibly the rock bottom of 20 years. There are a lot of possible reasons for a Total War title to fall flat, and Rome 2 of 2013 ticked pretty much all of the boxes at the same time and on the same day. Technically an abomination, the game was barely functional. One reviewer called it a limping herbivore of a game. Running it was a hardware lottery where your state-of-the-art high-end rig could underperform a budget build assembled five years earlier. The game was really dull and dreary. The art direction and overall aesthetic was confused, trying to put pottery designs into the unit cards and just adding interface confusion on top of ugly, uninspiring monotony, consistent with the soundtrack. There was no clear vision of where the gameplay satisfaction was supposed to come from, which was completely inevitable given that fundamental game systems like terrain effects on combat were completely reversed, with units on the lower ground gaining an advantage over the units charging downhill into them. What the fuck? I've still not had an explanation for that. Basic gameplay mechanics were broken, such as the iconic Testudo, which conferred no defensive advantage in the face of a hail of shot and arrow. How could there have been a coherent player satisfaction vision throughout development when the game was this hopeless on launch? To summarise for the sake of avoiding repetition, Rome 2 was an almost completely unmitigated disaster on day one from the top down. It was so bad that 15 patches of attempts to fix all of its baggage couldn't lend it an ounce of dignity. On launch, it should have been summarily shot in the head, kicked into a cheap casket, and booted into an open sewer canal feeding into the sea, so the rest of its development cycle could go productively towards further enhancing the ever majestic Shogun 2. But Troy Total War avoided almost all of this. I had respect for Troy from the first time I played it, Respect which was never there for Rome 2. During my time on Troy, I've had one crash that never repeated. The art style of the game is really good. It's immersive and really hits the Bronze Age classical mythology era aesthetic. The way the polished bronze glows and communicates its metallicity in a way that no steel in any other Total War game has before it. It kind of reminds me of the Mithril from Third Age Total War. The sunlit trees that decorate the field, their viridescent green darkened briefly as thick clouds roll over the battlefield. That stuff is all great. I can look at this game all day. I'm always above 60 FPS. The mousing is consistent and smooth. The interface is good, with functioning groups and manual key bindings that let me reach my full micromanagement potential. The game doesn't stand in my way in any sense in terms of letting me paint the picture in my mind with the units on the ground. So despite all this, 
why is Troy basically a failed Total War game to me? Joining the pile with all the other uninspired technical disasters like Empire and Rome 2, and unbalanced and meaningless gameplay messes like Warhammer. There are two main reasons for it, and I'm only going to properly examine the biggest one in this video. The minor one that I'm going to skip over is single entity units. Maybe I'll deal with that in another video. The main issue that I am going to cover today is the combat modifiers from Difficulty. The hidden combat modifiers are a textbook instance of fake Difficulty, which is one of the biggest blights on gaming. If there's anything that needs to be purged from game design industry-wide to make games more worthwhile and enjoyable, it's fake slash artificial difficulty. Hidden combat modifiers from difficulty are a stain on this franchise like nothing else. I'll explain what they are. If you put the battle difficulty all the way up in a Total War game, then every enemy unit, even the peasants and the archers, will be given stat bonuses that affect their performance against your units. This can be melee damage, melee attack rate, reload rate for missile units, or morale. The effects on melee performance are the most profound, far-reaching, and offensive. In Rome Total War, peasants become imbued with melee ability and morale that made them into light infantry that could go toe-to-toe -to -toe with your hastati. And in Three Kingdoms, it means that your rugged medium swords will lose to enemy light spearmen in a fair fight. These stat changes are intended to make the AI more of a threat, to reduce the potency of your units relative to the AIs. It mostly succeeds. It does a hell of a lot more than just that though. Its effects are far-reaching and completely denature every aspect of the gameplay. Their implementation is indiscriminate and not carefully considered, and if you respond to their introduction properly, your tactics will be completely altered. You have less recourse as entire types of units and methods of usage become less viable. You're restricted. Imagine playing a Shogun 2 where Katana Samurai can never perform well in a melee. Imagine how terrible Shogun 2 would be if Katana Samurai objectively sucked. Increasing difficulty should be to invite the game to require a more complete and holistic playstyle from the player, but you're not. You're able to take less fights in less ways. Your approach to those fights is severely restricted, and you take less risks in case an accident puts you up against the modifiers more directly. Sometimes it doesn't matter how good of a player you are, the doors are just closed and can never be opened. Some things are just determined by the game to not be effective. It doesn't matter how skillful of a player you are, if your infantry are going to perform poorly when they clash, you can no longer use them for that while remaining effective as a player. Using infantry to take straight fair melees suddenly becomes as advisable as leaving them to stand under withering archer fire. And what the hell else are they supposed to do? They have swords and they stab, but every time you send them to stab something, they'll fuck it up. The unit is no longer viable and has no place in your army, or any army. The difficulty slider moves up, and units lose utility, and gameplay loses dimensions. One of the objections to this complaint about hidden combat modifiers is to just play on a lower difficulty. This isn't an argument. It's a complete cuck-out hamster-wheeling mental refuge. It's a platitude and it's a thought-terminating cliché that's a disservice to the person saying it and nothing else. It contributes nothing to the conversation or the situation. People put the difficulty up in Total War because they want a challenge. That's what the game has in place for people that want more challenge. If people complain about the difficulty in Total War, it's not because it's too difficult, it's because escalating the challenge is not escalating the satisfaction from overcoming the new challenge that they're getting. They're complaining because the attempt by the game to give the player challenge 
is giving them frustration instead. Playing games in the first place is to activate the reward system in the brain. It's a dopamine drip. Games are designed so that the average person playing will be able to just barely overcome the default challenge. Their commercial viability depends on that. For more serious gamers, like people that watch gameplay on YouTube, or even worse, upload it. <laughs> the difficulty settings exist. People like me have absolutely no recourse but to max out the sliders on every game they play from day one and have been doing that for years or even decades. Games that are properly designed and balanced allow for that and provide a heightened challenge with commensurately heightened satisfaction. It works for Shogun too. You start the campaign and max out the sliders and you're in for a hell of a ride. You've got to pay attention because your mistakes will be punished. The campaign map will provide constant challenge on the battle map and the player will be fighting to survive with every decision having long-term ramifications, both on the campaign map and the battle map. The battle map is why everyone plays Total War and there's no Total War with a more consistently, satisfyingly challenging battle map than Shogun 2. You play a campaign on Legendary and the AI is going to recruit full stacks and fire them at you and the best part of this is that it's possible to emerge through these underdog situations by fighting fairly and using the intended game mechanics and balanced armies with many components used in conjunction. Playing well is rewarded with success. Emergent gameplay and extended thinking is rewarded. Extreme perseverance and determination is rewarded. It's an excellent progression of the Total War model initiated by the original Shogun 11 years previously, and it still challenges me to this day. It's the greatest meaningful challenge that Total War has provided. It's always possible to be more ambitious and play even better. This is all because the AI doesn't cheat with fake stats. It simply produces way more units than you and that you need to figure out novel ways to defeat in an authentic, fair fight. It's a meaningful challenge on the battle map every time and the battle map is the whole point. Troy doesn't challenge me. You play these games on Legendary and they have these hidden combat modifiers. As a result, their units will be better than yours and you'll have extra considerations. It won't necessarily be harder, it won't be satisfying either. More units to overcome fairly is challenging and can be really satisfying. The same units with cheated stats that can be disregarded by avoidant gameplay is frustrating and it's boring. Shogun 2's balanced combat encourages emergent gameplay. Troy's hidden combat modifiers necessitate avoidant gameplay. Every battle is going to be the same as the last one because the same small set of available tactics is the only way the game permits you to be effective. If you're playing on Legendary, the place that you go to test your tactics, every battle in Troy is the same as the last one. There's a game that came out at a similar time as Shogun 1. It's called Sudden Strike. And just like Total War, it's a real-time tactics. It's extremely punishing and extremely gritty. When you play it on normal, what it's balanced for, you can successfully utilise very satisfying combined arms tactics with submachine gunners, riflemen, snipers, APCs, light armour, medium armour, heavy armour, AT emplacements, machine gun emplacements, howitzers, mortars, fire support like katushas, naval verfers, calliopes, unit support like medics, officers, tow trucks, supply trucks. Combat units are all more or less balanced for durability and damage and rate of fire and line of sight and armour penetration and speed. There's a tall challenge and the game provides the tools that can be used jointly to rise to it. On normal difficulty. If you put the difficulty up to hard, suddenly your heavy tanks no longer one-shot highly mobile enemy light tanks. 
they can now get close enough to your line to be able to give line of sight to their heavy tanks and their fire support, which focuses on your Tiger tank. Your heavy tank dies due to the dumb rush of a shitty little T-70. You've now got no heavy armour. The enemy T-34s move forward now. Your anti-tank guns are doing half as much damage as usual and they have no heavy tank support now and so the medium tanks last long enough to fire at your supply truck that's repairing an immobilised self-propelled gun. They both explode. Your line buckles as the enemy can now build momentum. The suppressing fire from your artillery is now landing behind their advance instead of on top of it. You did everything right, or almost everything right. You used everything at your disposal while facing the game's balancing and meta head-on. And this still happened. The original game balance is gone, and now so is all recognisable effective gameplay. So what do you do now? I'll tell you what you do now. You inch forward with an officer using his superior line of sight while everyone else sits on a cliff above a minefield that's protected by dragon's teeth and Czech hedgehogs. You rely on this sweaty bullshit entirely. You shoot every single tree to make sure it doesn't occlude a single enemy submachine gunner that can give away your entire position and invite every howitzer on the map to annihilate you. You blanket bomb the fog of war as you crawl forward if there's even a possibility of an enemy unit that could kill your officer who's not disposable. Because he's not disposable and everything relies on him surviving, you're now save load exploiting too. You're not doing this out of preference, but pragmatics. It's required because conventional tactics are no longer effective. You're now stuck in a tedious and repetitive, cold and ruthless, mechanistic combat loop that's completely devoid of meaningful, vibrant, stimulating and satisfying gameplay. It's soul-destroying, miserable bullshit. If you try to fight conventionally, you'll get punished with watching all your infantry slowly get massacred without being traded, all your invaluable heavy armour getting wiped out and bad engagements with weaker units. It's frustrating and it's miserable. You won't want to play the game anymore. You'll feel insulted that the developers couldn't figure out a real challenge for the player that permits them to play the actual game as intended at a higher level and instead had to go for a lazy and destructive fake difficulty modifier that completely destroys their own game's carefully considered meta and balancing. You'll feel annoyed that you're being forced to find refuge in exploits and unintended game mechanics and approaches, and start to resent the game for not being complex enough to handle this weight. You'll feel annoyed that the difficulty option even exists in the first place in this state, when the game's clearly not designed for it at all. It's really just abysmal and sad. Such a wasted opportunity. It's a wasted opportunity every time a game does this shit. And do you want to know what the most absurd irony is about playing in such a sweaty, bullshit way in Sudden Strike? All of the heavy armour that you protected from bad engagements by avoiding using them will still be there at the end of the mission. Their engines still humming, having never gotten into second gear. That's your reward. To sit and look at your useless prize heavy tanks. It's then that you realise it was all for nothing. They were useless all along and they might as well have just been chucked into the meat grinder. The only units you needed were an officer and a sniper and some howitzers for hard targets and 10 hours of sitting enduring a pointlessly denatured, unbalanced, broken challenge. Likewise in Total War, these hidden combat modifiers necessitate an altered, denatured playstyle due to a complete loss of balance. In Three Kingdoms, the already powerful cavalry becomes even more incentivized, with an optimized legendary difficulty army consisting almost entirely of cavalry and a few siege engines. On legendary difficulty in Three Kingdoms, melee infantry are almost completely useless, always underperforming in their melee engagement role, so you just ignore them. And Warhammer, which I haven't played, 
it's apparently the same deal with infantry, rewarding overutilization on archers to almost completely circumvent the difficulty modifiers. In Troy, it's similar again, with the player doing anything to avoid a direct head-on engagement in melee. It's especially absurd in Troy, a game set during the Trojan War, where different classes of infantry are all jostling and manoeuvring for favourable fights with their varying weights of bronze. It reminds me of how Rome 2 in the unit collision system of its engine was entirely unprepared to handle the Roman heavy infantry that was the iconic and emblematic focus of its era. If Rome 2's combat engine had one task, it was to make heavy legionnaires look and feel badass, and it was fucking worthless at it. It's just absurd. And while Rome 2's quintessential Lorica Segmentata dressed heavy Roman infantry combat fell flat due to technical limitations and software slash engine problems, Troy's bronze clanging sword and sandal combat is falling flat out of design choice, with almost every single unit in the game being in one of the classes of melee infantry and doomed to underperformance when used in its designated intended role by hidden combat modifiers from difficulty that mean they can't stand toe to toe as they're supposed to. What this means is that if you're playing Troy seriously and attempting to be effective, you're either completely neglecting infantry and spamming chariots and javelins, or you're accepting that infantry are terrible in the straight melee, and you're bringing them along hoping to be able to manoeuvre and manipulate the enemy into dying from its own helplessness. In either case, you're completely disengaging from the game balancing and from paying attention to units and their traits and attributes, especially when it involves melee and protracted determined grit. The exact grit that goes hand in hand with the most satisfying gameplay moments Total War should be all about. You're ignoring the intended meta of the game, and you're instead relying on strange accidental quirks of the gameplay that are just hanging off of the engine and fall out of it, that might as well not even be there, for which it's an accident that they even exist. Including the heroes that I mentioned at the start of the video, and on exploiting the morale system to break units without confrontation. It doesn't matter if your swordsmen have plastic swords now, your spearmen could have dildos in place of spear tips for all the difference it would make. The gameplay that produces is very tactically flat, is unsatisfying and unimpressive to execute, and importantly does not remotely resemble the original Shogun or the Shogun 2 that was the peak of the franchise, it just looks and feels weird. Who watches Troy from 2004 and wants to play a game where Myrmidons have to shy away from straight fights? Imagine Troy from 2004, but Brad Pitt is just running around drawing enemy troops into bad engagements. I'm a veteran of the Dishonored Skiller movement. That's what I left to do after Rome 2 failed. In a lot of important ways, I spawned it. I know exactly what it looks like to be fully engaged with a well-designed game's robust mechanics and using them to creatively and satisfyingly derive new ways to play and find new solutions to problems. That's what gaming is all about, and that's what immersive sims like Deus Ex and Dishonored are the apex of. I know exactly what emergent gameplay looks like and what the satisfaction of that should feel like. These new Total War games are not designed properly. They don't encourage any meaningful emergent gameplay. They encourage avoidant gameplay, compelling the player to play like a bitch, to hide and stay away from entire gameplay systems and mechanics. So long as Total War operates like this, it's moving backwards in all the ways that are substantive and will forever be in the shadow of its past. It's tragic, because Total War is in a very unique position in terms of its ability to implement difficulty. Total War is a hybrid game with both turn-based strategy and real-time battles. The aggregate campaign difficulty is arguably a synergistic addition of the difficulty level of these two separate arenas. There's a constant feeding back and forth between the strategy of the campaign map and the tactics of the battle map. If Total War wants to be more difficult, all it really needs to do 
is to have a more punishing campaign map that produces more challenging battles by way of more underdog situations for the player. And earlier in the campaign, no other real-time tactics game has this luxury because no other real-time tactics game can just tweak an entirely separately developed system and have its real-time tactics challenge escalate. This is why games like Command & Conquer and Sudden Strike have the same fake difficulty as Total War does and fall into the same trap. There's nothing else they can do without designing an entirely separate gameplay experience. It's no coincidence that the one time Total War seemed to realise this and properly handled it was with Shogun 2. Despite having no combat modifiers in battle, Shogun 2 is still widely considered to be the most difficult Total War campaign and that's because all of its difficulty comes from the campaign map and eventually finds its way onto the battle map. There's no way for you to hide and engage in avoidant gameplay to just disregard those massive stacks of Yari Samurai that AI sends at you. Combat modifiers can be avoidant gameplayed to the point where they might as well not exist. Entire stacks of Yari and Bow Samurai can't be. The challenge is there and it's consistent and it's ever present. You use authentic real time tactics to overcome it. You're forced to acknowledge the strengths and weaknesses of each unit and be aware of all of the variables that affect their performance. You face the challenge head on and you overcome it properly. That is what gaming is all about. That is what Total War should be all about. If Shogun 2 did it in 2011, there's no reason for it to disappear for 7 titles and 9 years and counting. What kind of game developer lets their best work remain in the past? What kind of game developer knows how to make a more satisfying player experience than ever and push their genre to new heights, but doesn't? The answer to that is the real elephant in the room. It's time it was addressed, and it's time for things to change. I have a Patreon page for if you like the videos enough to want to support their production. Special thanks to Matteo Olivetti, Nerdington, The Rode 451, Halcyon, William Ballangari, and Robert Sparks.